This is CBN News Watch. And thank you so much for joining us. I'm Ephraim Graham. President Donald Trump's longtime attorney and fixer is facing prison time. Michael Cohen pleaded guilty Tuesday to eight counts of financial fraud, tax evasion, and campaign finance violations, saying the president directed him to pay off two women with claims to have had affairs with the president. But it's not clear what this all means for the president. Charlene Aaron has the story. Michael, what's your message to the president? Former Trump attorney Michael Cohen pleaded guilty to eight counts of violating campaign finance rules by paying hush money to two women who claimed affairs with Trump. Mr. Cohen pleaded guilty to two campaign finance charges, one for causing an unlawful corporate contribution and a second one for personally making an excessive personal contribution both for the purpose of influencing the 2016 election. 11 days before the election, Cohen paid off porn star Stormy Daniels, who claimed she had a one night stand with Trump. The president initially said he knew nothing about it. Did you know about the $130,000 payment to Stormy Daniels? Cohen said in federal court Tuesday that he made the payments in coordination and at the direction of a candidate for federal office. It's, it's not clear if right Trump here, broke the law, and legal experts say it would be hard to prove in court. But Cohen's lawyer, Lanny Davis, told MSNBC... It was a crime for President Trump to direct Michael Cohen to the crime of a campaign finance donation that exceeded the legal limitations. But Political points out the documents outlining Cohen's plea deal don't appear to provide any examples or evidence that Trump directed Cohen to do anything. And the president's lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, said there was no allegation of any wrongdoing against the president. But legal experts say there could be problems for the president if he is heard on tape directing Cohen to pay the women with campaign funds. Cohen's guilty plea could add to Democratic calls to impeach the president. Legal analysts say a sitting president cannot be indicted, but he can be impeached, which is a political, not a criminal response. Violation of election laws yeah. are regarded as kind of jaywalking in the realm of things about elections. Uh, and there are so many of them. Every administration violates the election laws. Every candidate violates the election right. laws when they run for president. In addition to the two campaign finance counts, Cohen is also facing one count of giving a false statement to a bank and five counts of tax evasion. He could face up to 65 years in prison although sentencing guidelines only recommend around four to five years. Meanwhile, Cohen's guilty plea came at almost the same time that former Trump campaign chairman Paul Manafort was convicted of eight financial crimes in a trial arising from special counsel Robert Mueller's investigation, even though it has nothing to do with Russia collusion. But for now, the focus is clearly on Cohen's case and the implications it may or may not have for President Trump. Charlene Aaron, CBN News. Here now is a look at some of the other major headlines we're following for you today inside the CBN newsroom. The nearly five-week search for a missing Iowa college student, Molly Tibbet, is over. Authorities discovered what's believed to be her body Tuesday. Officials say Christian Rivera, an illegal immigrant, confessed to kidnapping Tibbets, killing her, and dumping her body in a cornfield. Rivera has been charged with first-degree murder. President Trump noted the arrest and called for immigration law changes at a rally in West Virginia. Residents of Hawaii are bracing themselves as a powerful hurricane strengthens off the coast. The National Weather Service announced Tuesday Hurricane Lane had become a Category 5 hurricane with winds at 155 miles an hour. Weather officials say that Hurricane Lane's path is unpredictable, but the storm is expected to turn northwest toward Hawaii today and possibly make landfall Thursday through Saturday. U.S. Representative Duncan Hunter and his wife have been indicted on corruption charges. A grand jury charged the Republican lawmaker with using more than $250,000 in campaign money to pay for vacations, dental work, golf outings, and other personal expenses. Hunter was strongly favored to hold a House seat in the San Diego area's 50th Congressional District. For more on these stories and others throughout the day, you can always visit CBNNews.com. On the heels of yet another cyber attack from Russian hackers which targeted Washington, D.C.-based conservative think tank, a Senate Judiciary hearing took up the issue of protecting our critical infrastructure against cyber hackers. CBN's national security correspondent, Eric Gonzalez has more on hackers' efforts to interfere with life in the United States. 
The threats to our critical infrastructure like power and water treatment plants are real and senators say the public has no clue how bad it is. America is under cyber attack. We're beginning to act but not quick enough and not forcefully enough. Now, occasionally the hackers are foreign government individuals, but sometimes those governments are also hiring freelance hack hackers to also do their bidding. Senators from both sides say more communication must take place, not just to inform the public, but between privately owned companies and the government. With nearly 90% of all U.S. critical infrastructure privately owned, Senator Lindsey Graham offered up the idea of rewarding companies that work together with Homeland Security and other federal agencies on cybersecurity. How about talking, immunity uh, from lawsuits? If you'll yeah, do right. what's best in your industry, we will protect you from being sued. Yes, sir, I think that's a How great How about idea. some carrots on the table? Because I don't think DHS can regulate this. Democratic Senator from Rhode Island, Sheldon Whitehouse, brought up a controversial idea, hacking back, which allows the victim of a cyber attack to go on the offensive and hack the adversary. And I think Senator Graham's focus on sanctions against the oligarchs is exactly the right way to solve this. If you want to deter Vladimir Putin, Whack him right in the oligarchs. Security experts say we need to get ideas from our allies. Uh, Israel is attacked by Iran and Hezbollah every week in efforts to use cyber tools to disrupt their critical infrastructure. So far they've been able to beat them off, but if I was worried about a, a non-state actor, I would worry about Hezbollah first. Security experts have warned that retaliation in cyberspace present a serious risk and escalate quickly, especially with hackers backed by foreign governments. Eric Rosales, CBN News, Washington. It's a happy day on Wall Street as the bull market in stocks is now being considered the longest ever. The stock market bottomed on March 9th of 2009 and despite some corrections has been heading up ever since, getting a big boost since President Trump won the election in November of 2016. And many analysts say the bull market is st it still has room to run. The Standard & Poor's 500 is near its record high. The widely watched Dow, Dow Jones Industrial is over 25,000, and some believe it could reach 30,000 before the bull market ends. National Security Advisor John Bolton says the U.S. will keep up its policy of maximum pressure on Iran to stop its nuclear weapons program. Bolton spoke at a news conference in Jerusalem today after several days meeting with Israeli leaders. And by bringing the hammer down again of reimposing American sanctions, uh, we've seen a profound negative effect uh, on Iran. I think actually more serious than uh, we would have predicted. We're just simply going to do what uh, the president has said repeatedly and exert maximum pressure on Iran uh, to make it clear that they will never get deliverable nuclear weapons. Ambassador Bolton heads to Geneva for talks with Russia's counterpart to address removing Iran's military presence from Syria. Iran poses a serious military threat to Israel. Coming up, he is one of the most famous figures in the Bible, King David of Israel. Now he's being remembered in a new light and sound show in the old city of Jerusalem. We're going to bring you a look at that right after this. Stay with us. And welcome back to CBN News Watch. King David has been part of Jerusalem for 3,000 years. Now, as Chris Mitchell reports, from the old city of Jerusalem, a new light and sound show celebrates his life and his legacy. Four nights a week, the ancient walls of the Tower of David Museum become a canvas for telling the story of the shepherd boy who would lead Israel. But we don't have objects material. We, there are not pictures of King David. So I decided to make it throughout, to pieces of art. And there are masterpieces, the big masters, like Chagall, like Rembrandt, like Matisse, everyone, Michelangelo. So it was the perfect thing. Let's travel through art to meet the king. And in that journey, the audience learns how David became a universal figure. David in the Muslim religion is a prophet. For the Christian, is in the roots of Christ. And for the Jews, he reunified all the tribes in one side in Jerusalem, the capital of the Jewish people. To see the story of King David was a dream because, as you know, this citadel called after his name. And he is the king who established the city 
He is the king of the Bible, he's the musician, and we feel it's a gift actually for him. King David left his legacy, which is the music and the songs of the Tehillim. Behind the scenes, the show requires a huge technical effort. It takes 35 million pixels, 18 laser projectors, 20 speakers, and more than six miles of cable. Each computer is connected to a projector. What is powerful is the software behind the, the system that synchronizes maps, uh, controls, uh, and does almost everything behind the scenes of the show. Yet the technology and King David are designed to bring people to the city of Jerusalem. We want to open this place for people from all over the world. We feel this place can connect people from all over the world who love Jerusalem. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, The Tower of David, Jerusalem. And still ahead, actor Hill Harper joins us to talk about his new film, An Interview with God. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Wouldn't it be nice to have a sit-down interview with God? That is the premise of a new film that wraps its three-day run in theaters today. Here's a look at why you just might want to spend this evening at the theater. Hey, Gary. What are you doing here? I'm working on something. I'm doing an interview. With who? Paul Ash, with Errol. Uh, I know who you are. I know all your work. I'm a fan. I cover religion for a secular paper. The stuff I write usually ends up in the lifestyle section. Okay, today is June 1st. Please say your name and spell it. I'm God, G-O-D. Sarah just left me. This is it about Afghanistan? No, I think it might be a bigger problem, an older problem. You are about out of time. You're saying... Yes. This interview, it's eating me up. It's really an interview? Yeah with God. Sometimes there aren't signs when someone's in trouble. Paul, I've given you a great gift, but it's up to you to receive my gift. I love it. You're kidding. About time God made the front page, you disagree. And that familiar face in those scenes is actor Hill Harper in the film Interview with God. He's a newspaper editor who encourages another journalist to pursue an interview with God for a front page story. And Hill Harper joins us right now for a closer look at this big screen story. So, Hill, would you be interested in an interview with God? Oh, I mean, who, who wouldn't? You know, <laughs> shooting, shooting that film... Um, I thought a lot about that. And, uh, you know, but I think that in many ways, we all have the opportunity to constantly have an interview with God through prayer. And and um, and I feel like God is speaking to me all the time as well, if, if I can get out of my own way and really listen. Um, so uh, I loved shooting the film. I love the questions that the film raises. And uh, and and absolutely, the answer to your question is yes, I would love a sit down and interview uh, with God. <laughs> I like that. What drew you to this particular film? You're a busy man on ABC right now doing other series. What drew you to this film? You know, what, what, what drew me to interview with God is the same thing that, that draws me to, to all the projects that I do. I seek to, to, to do projects that, that are entertaining, sure, but also have something underlying as well, something that's more important, something that's bigger with a bigger message or a bigger theme that's hopefully uplifting to the audience, the actual theme of the project itself. You know, I don't mind playing like the bad guy or the, or the bad characters or what have you in quotes, because that's fun as an actor to play different characters. But it's really, to me, what's most important is about the message or the theme of the actual project itself that you're lending your name to. And Interview with God is an independent film that certainly has all of those elements. And I was proud to play Gary and proud to uh, to be a part of this film. In playing Gary, he's a newspaper editor. Where did you look for guidance and direction as to who this character should be? Well, you know, what I looked for really was he was a leader, you know, and he's a leader of this organization. And what's so wonderful about it that's, that's a little different is that oftentimes you see projects where the leader 
is not supportive of what the uh, what the the younger character is pushing for. Mm -hmm. And in this case, it seemed you know what was great about the writing is that Gary's actually saying, "Wow, you should go further with this. Of course, God deserves to be on the front page, um, and we need more leaders like that. We need more leaders to." step up and not always take the fearful way out and, and also, but, but step up for the right things and the right reasons. Um, not, not things that I think are about vitriol and negativity and, and, you know, and, 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 and coarse language, but about celebration of the good celebration of positivity, celebration of, of, of God and, and faith. What hope do you have for the impact of this story? Well, you know, I just hope it inspires folks to know that there's nothing they can't do and they can always have a con continuous conversation with God. They can have a conversation through prayer. They can have a conversation just sitting back and listening, you know, um, and to the messages they receive, um, getting out of their own fear. Fear stands for false evidence appearing real. And, um, and the best way is to, is to counter that with another F word, which is faith. Get into your faith and then really understand how um, that, that there's, you know, God in the universe, they're working on your behalf. If you actually take a, take a second to listen and really follow your heart. Um, and so for me, my favorite word in the English language is the word courage. And the etymology of the root of that word is core, which means heart. So follow your heart. What's in your heart and ask God, ask, ask, ask for, ask for, um, guidance, ask for signs, ask for signals. And, and, and that's where it comes to your intuition. And so if you really can get into this film and see that intuition drives, um, you can understand how faith plays with that and, 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 and is with that. And if you get out of your fear and out of your head, um, you can you can make decisions that you feel great about and have faith in. And so I'm ho I'm hoping the film is uplifting to folks, hope they enjoy it. And, and that, like I do with all my projects, I say, folks, reach out, you know, if you if you like it or if you don't like something, yeah. if you have a question, DM me on Instagram. <laughs> the beautiful thing about social media is that we all can stay in contact with each other and hopefully inspire each other um, and uplift each other. My favorite quote from Dr. King is when he said, we're all tied, to all tied together in a single garment of mutual destiny, which means that my destiny is inextricably linked with anyone who's watching this right now. And so let's work together to make the world better. Um, let's make let's bring more people together, more diverse voices together. Absolutely. Let's all work together to make the world a better place. Up next, a big crowd and a harvest of thousands of souls at Pastor Greg Laurie's Harvest event in Southern California over the weekend. We'll have that story for you when we come back. Stay with us. More than 10,000 people put their faith in Christ during Pastor Greg Laurie's Southern California Harvest event this weekend. Nearly 100,000 people attended the three-day event at Angel Stadium in Anaheim. They were encouraged to bring their Bibles to show support for the Word of God. It was reported earlier, an area real estate company removed a series of billboards after receiving complaints over an image of Pastor Lori holding a Bible. Lori told the crowd to hold up your Bibles and say, we are not ashamed of the Word of God. Right now, it's time for your Wednesday's Word, and today's Word is trust. That said, I leave you with this thought and this scripture. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. With that, He promises to direct your path. I hope you take comfort in that. It is certainly what is getting me through this day and beyond. I encourage you to make this a wonderful Wednesday. That's going to do it for this edition of CBN Newswatch. You can always get more of our exclusive coverage of the issues you care most about at CBNNews.com. And we would love to hear what you think about the stories you've seen here. You can do that by emailing newswatch at CBN.com. And of course, you can always reach out and touch us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Hope you'll join us again right here next time. This concludes the newscast, but the news continues 24-7 at CBNNews.com. Make it a wonderful Wednesday. We'll see you right back here same time tomorrow. Goodbye, everybody, and God bless.